Imagine yourself walking into a meeting with a presentation that leaves everyone in awe and no one really needs to know how you did this in a minute. Excited? Welcome to the future of presentations where you can create stunning PowerPoint with the power of ChatGPT. In this video, we will show you how professional presentations will get done in a minute and not hours. You are about to see how ChatGPT can revolutionize the way you create content and transform your ideas into visually stunning presentations. We have also got a bonus for the tech savvy. We will show you how to automate your PowerPoint creation using VBA code. Let's get started. Welcome to this course on ChatGPT for Microsoft PowerPoint. So we'll dive deep into the world of PowerPoint in which you will get to know a lot about the world, how the PowerPoint presentations are made. We'll know how to make creative and efficient slideshows, impressive presentations so that you could captivate your audience. Now, with the help of ChatGPT, a latest model by OpenAI, we'll know how we can use shortcuts, streamline the process of making these slideshows and effectively create a solid, stunning presentations for our audience. So without any further ado, let's look at what is agenda of the session. So in this session, we will discuss about the introduction of ChatGPT. First, we'll know what ChatGPT is about. We'll know about its developer, OpenAI. How did it make it? What are the engine that runs ChatGPT? Then we'll talk about the various types of presentations you can create, right? Which is very important to know from the perspective how you will start thinking about making the presentation using ChatGPT. Then we'll know what are the key elements of a presentation, right? What should be there be a title slide, a filler slide, how the images should be placed, how much pointers are required. So all this we will talk about in the key elements of a presentation. Then after that, we'll use some prompts. We'll add some prompts to ChatGPT and we'll see how we can add content, how we can create content slide by slide using ChatGPT for making a slide deck right for making a PPD presentation. So let's start with our course. Now let's look at this module in which we'll talk about the introduction to ChatGPT. We'll know what artificial intelligence is all about and how the ChatGPT is integrated into giving us very short answers to the questions that we input, right? Effective answers, right? So what is artificial intelligence? Let's look at a brief about AI that we talk about. So AI is a, basically a simulation of human intelligence in machines designed to think and act like people, right? So now artificial intelligence in a nutshell is about, you know, using data, pre-trained data to make a machine work like humans, right? It's just in a nutshell, it is just giving brains to humans, right? So artificial intelligence is simulation of human intelligence in machines designed to think and act like people. So how does this work? So I'll just go a little off topic and talk about how this actually works. So for example, let's say you are making a sandwich. So what would be the steps that are involved in making a sandwich? It would be you would be taking, uh, let's say a slice of bread, two slices of bread, maybe a slice of cheese, maybe some veggies like cucumber, tomato, onions, right? And step by step manners, you would toast your bread, then you will add the cheese on it, maybe a butter on it, then you'll add uh, let's say cucumber and all the veggies on it and then you will close the sandwich and it is ready to eat, right? This would be some of the process that would be involved. Now, how would a machine learn all this? So, a machine would learn each step of the way. It will learn how you are lifting your hand to, you know, take out a slice of bread, maybe lift it, how you are cutting your veggies, how you are adding cheese. So, it will learn this process of making a sandwich from the data that you would provide right? From your actions, it will notice that actions, it will imitate that actions and it'll learn through that way. So now let's say you are one human. So this he will repeat or she will repeat, the machine will repeat for n number of people. Now it would have a large chunk of data, then it will learn on that data. So making a sandwich requires these elements. So it, this is how a machine learns through artificial intelligence, right? This is the data that comes in and machine learning algorithms that work that make it the model that it is today. So AI involves the development of algorithms and computer programs that can perform tasks that are typically require human intelligence uh, and natural language, recognizing objects and images, making decisions and solving problems, right? First, what used to happen is computers used to understand binary language. They still do ones and zeros, right? So now what has happened 
through ChatGPT or through artificial intelligence, the medium has been such that you don't need to learn a programming language. You don't need to learn C programming. You don't need to learn Python. You don't need to learn Java or any other thing of that sort. You can just communicate in the language that you know. It may be English. It may be French. It may be Spanish. You can just input what you want from a machine in the language that you know. That's the beauty about the world that we are in today. Because we are in the hands in which we can ask anything and everything that we want and the machine will give us the answer, right? Artificial intelligence softwares are here for a while. For example, if you've known about uh, Google Assistant, right? Google Voice Assistant, Apple Siri, uh, Amazon's Alexa. So all these are virtual uh, personal assistants that you have that are also driven by artificial intelligence and machine learning algorithms, right? So when I talk about ChatGPT, so now ChatGPT is the AI powered language model that is developed by a company called OpenAI. We'll look around, we'll have a hands on it. But before that, let's look at what this is about. So OpenAI is uh, basically uh, an AI research foundation, the goal of promoting and developing friendly AIs that benefits human as a whole, right? So what does GPT in ChatGPT mean? It means generative pre-trained transformer and the architecture has been trained on a large corpus of uh, text data to generate human-like responses, right? To the prompts that we give. So that's basically in a nutshell. From creating high quality content to providing keyword suggestion, nurturing leads. So in terms of marketing, in terms of anything, you want to create content, you need to know about various principles that are long standard, you need to know about anything from a person who is studying in class 9, let's say uh, he or she wants to know about uh, Newton laws. So he can type, he can ask in ChatGPT what this is about and it will give you the answer, right? To maybe doing some complex logical reasoning questions, right? Suggesting some ways, implementing certain strategies that also can be done using ChatGPT. So there are a lot of tasks that are involved in it. There are a lot of different things, a lot of different variety of things that we can do, right? So all this is about ChatGPT. Then if we dive deep into how it actually works, right? How does a generative pre-trained transformer? Let's dissect the world and understand in, in a more deeper depth what that is about. So understanding generative pre-trained transformer. Now generative means that it creates new information, right? So learning from what it has, it creates new information, it generates new information. That is generative. Then pre-trained means, so initially the model undergoes through unsupervised pre-training phase where they are exposed of large amounts of data. So the data is divided into chunks, it's known as one is test data, one is training data. So all those things they are learnt on, they are the data that is dumped on them, they learn through that data and understand what is right and what is wrong in that context, right? So they undergo a supervised fine-tuning phase which provides the guidance to the model and this fine-tuning process is tailored to specific tasks that are being performed, right? For example, changing uh, the sentence from one language to the other language, right? So this is trained to do that. Then transformers. So now transformer is a very technical term that defines the deep learning algorithms that are there, right? So the deep learning models, transformers utilize a technique called tracking relationship in sequential data to learn context. In the case of GPTs, they observe words as tokens within a sentence and make predictions about the following word. If I take an example, let's say Ram is going to buy dash. So now the dash word is what it will be trained on, right? It needs to predict the next word in the sentence, right? It can be buying a bicycle or uh, buying uh, XYZ thing. So it can be done in that way that need, it needs to predict what is the next word in it, right? So that is all about generative pre-trained transformers. So let's look at what are the steps that are involved in this process, right? So the first step is the training the GPT model. Now training involves a lot of dump content dump data because we humans produce data in a day-to-day -day manner, right? We produce tremendous amounts of data, right? So training on that data is number one, knowing what uh, all the data can do, what are the different elements are there in that data so that it will train on that. Then splitting the data set into various chunks, various categories, then supervised learning, evaluating the GPT model and fine tuning the GPT model so that it can remove all the errors that are present in there or all the things that do not support the algorithm, right? So that is done in the fine tuning 
So what actually happens in that, let's understand. In step number one, training the GPT. So GPT is trained under the process called a generative pre-training. So in this generative pre-training, the model is given a large corpus of text, right? The large amount of data and is asked to predict the next word in the sequence. Now this process is repeated a lot of times and over the time, the model learns to predict the next word with increasing accuracy. So the number of iterations it would do to understand the data is tremendous. It's in, in millions, right? Keep on iterating on the data till it gets the right word, right? Then is splitting the data set. Now, what happens is that the data is set is split into two parts. Number one, a training set and a test set. So the training set is used to train the GPT model and the test set is used to evaluate the GPT model. Now the test set is not used to train the model. So it can be used to measure the model's accuracy or on the unseen data that is provided, right? This third part would be training the GPT model. Now, the GPT model is trained using a technique called supervised learning. So in supervised learning, the model is given a set of input data and a set of output data. So the model learns to map the input data to the output data. So in this case of GPT, the input data is a sequence of words and the output data is the next word in the sequence. The fourth element, right, the next element would be evaluating the GPT model. Now, the GPT model is evaluated on the test sets. Okay, so they do not really touch the trained data set. They only look forward to the test data set. Now, this accuracy of the model is measured by the percentage of time the model predicts the correct next word. So, let's say if I'm building a machine learning model. So, what would happen in that case is that I would check the accuracy from the number of iterations that has happened and the number of times it is correct in terms of the prediction that it has to. So any model that already analyzes what is going on would not be considered good. While someone, if that model could predict what is happening in the foreseen future, that is what the model accuracy or the model uh, predictiveness would tell, right? So the better it predicts for the future, the better standing that model would have. So the next is fine tuning the GPT. So the GPT model can be fine tuned on a specific task. So the fine tuning is a process by adjusting the model's parameter to improve its performance on a specific task. For example, GPT can be fine tuned to generate text, translate languages and answer questions. So the start of all this was to translate one language to the other. Then it grew on from that, right? So that was the historical part in which it was trained to translate languages, generate various texts, shorter text, and then give more logical uh, sound answers. So using GPT, the model is used to generate text, right? Translate languages, answer the questions, perform various tasks. So this can be used to generate human-like text, right? The way we speak, not in the terms of computer languages, right? So this was about uh, what does GPT mean? So now let's look at the various type of PowerPoint presentations or the types of presentations are present, right? So there are different kinds of presentations. So let's talk about them. So the presentations come in, in various formats and styles which are catering to the different communication needs and audience preferences. Now let's look at some of the common types of, of presentation types, right? So the first one is informative presentation. So now what this is about, this is what you're currently seeing, right? The, the slides that is there, right? So this slide is basically what is the purpose is to provide information to educate the audience about a specific topic. So I'm talking about presentation. So this makes it a informative presentation type, right? So these presentations are content driven, right? So this is a very important keyword right here that this is content driven and the focus is to explaining the concepts and processes. So if we look about this current slide, right, I have a header, right, right here. So this is the header we talk about. So then we have the content over here, right? The context is defined over here. So this makes it an informative presentation in which it is good to have a written text and it's okay if there is no image. So the purpose is to make an audience understand a particular concept, right? So for example, when I was explaining to you about the various steps, right? So I used something known as a flow diagram, right? So this, the purpose is to make them understand. So first what will happen is train, training GPT, then splitting, then supervise. So the way it is structured, right? This is in a flow type of information, right? So this is good for an informative presentations, right? 
then you have persuasive presentations right maybe the goal here is to persuade a group a set of set group of audience right maybe to adopt a particular viewpoint right idea or a course of action maybe in a business setting in a business meeting when someone is talking about let's say what are the future prospects of of xyz uh, commodity or xyz things right so you need to tell them why my idea is better right so the goal of that presentation is to persuade the audience right now you would do anything to make them believe that what you are doing is right so the structure would be in such a way that they adopt a particular viewpoint at the end of the presentation right then is demonstration or product presentation now what is this about this is about for example if you are selling amway let's say amway is a product right you're selling amway so you're creating slides you want to reach out a lot of audience you're talking about that particular product so how would that show they that would be uh, probably keeping that product picture in the slide then talking about that slide talking about the various elements of that product so that would be a a more related to a product presentation right so these presentation showcase a product or a service the focus in is highlighting the features benefits and value of offering right so this is also very very important type of presentation so basically in a nutshell what you create depends on what type of presentation it is right so basically in a product presentation you cannot create an informative presentation in which you do not have let's say any sort of images and you're just describing the product because at the end the audience have to visualize what you're talking about right so in order to do that if it is a product demonstration or a product presentation then the product should be the image of the product is the key to make them understand or resonate what you're talking about in a more efficient manner so these presentations showcase how a product or a service works right so this is about demonstration or a product presentation then then it is conference and keynote presentations right you might have been to uh, let's say research conference or let's say an event in which you are a keynote speaker so delivered in these conferences right at large events keynote presentations set the tone of the event and often featured influential speakers sharing inside trends and thought provoking ideas now this type of presentation may include a lot of flow diagrams a lot of you know images because you're catering to a large audience right let's say you you're presenting it in a large auditorium there there are hundreds of people thousands of people sitting maybe right so getting those fonts bigger for them to see look at focus on right using certain elements that are large certain elements that are small the one that is large would have a greater chunk in which you would be delivering to them so the focus would be that aspect the part in which the the text would be smaller or the images would be smaller would hold a significantly less amount of time while presenting or also the focus would be a bit less then comes sales or pitch presentations now what does this mean now sales or pitch presentation is basically designed to persuade the potential customers or investors to buy a product or invest in a project right now these presentation emphasize the value of proposition the market need and the competitive advantage that it would have right so this would be about the sales pitch that is there then there is something known as elevator pitch now elevator pitch are considered to be a very short pitch maybe in a slide or two the aim is that it should be as quick as you are uh, going from ground floor to let's say 10th floor so the amount of time you would take in an elevator is equivalent to the time of presentation you would have so this is that's why it's known as elevated pitch presentations so concise and compelling presentations that can be delivered within the time it takes to ride an elevator it's used to introduce oneself on a business idea very quickly so this type of presentations would mainly let's say have a title slide a big header right there then maybe the second slide is all about the infographics in which you have a lot of flow diagrams lot of charts something of that sort would be in a much more greater depth but it would not exceed 1 2 max not more than that right so that would be the and and the the best part about an elevator pitch is it would be heavy on content not necessarily be be text more visual content but it would not go more than two slides that for sure this may be filled up to a lot of 
greater chunk there would not be any space it may be like a collage or a, or let's say a word cloud sort of thing but it would not be more than two slides that's for sure now let's talk about what are the key elements of a presentation we talked about what are various types of presentations but now let's take a dive deep into what are the various elements of a presentation right we talked about the various types of presentations but now let's focus on the element inside the presentations what are the various elements so uh, the key elements include the number one is the title slide what is the title slide i'll just show you in my presentation itself something of this sort right where the resemblance is a big header right here a big header then you would have something to distinguish it right so this is the format then you also have let's say a template to the presentation right so this slide would be the first slide of the presentations which is known as a title slide okay then so that's what we talked about the title side the first slide include presentation title your name the date possibly the name of your organization or institution right so the second part is introduction now a brief introduction slide that sets the context for your presentation and outline what you will be covering right so it may have a byline let's say that okay this uh, topic is about this the particular thing right there will be a very short byline right that outlines what you are covering it's not necessarily popular in the current scenario in which you just have a title slide and then you move on to the agenda right so agenda slide is a slide that lists the current main topics or the sections of your presentation so that the audience know what to expect right for example i had as an agenda right i had four pointers now this is my first main pointer right first main pointer this is my second main pointer this is my third main pointer and this is my fourth main pointer so what is this required why is this required now this pointer will act as a filler slide for my upcoming modules let's say right so this comes here now how do i distinguish this this is a filler slide in which just the topic is marked in the slide you don't have a extra specifying border to this you just have a a, a normal let's say a normal text written on a slides known as filler slides why is this important distinguish number 1 from the title slide because title slide has a much more elevated much more intrinsic much more clear idea of that this is the title slide in this is just normal slide in which the title is written so the pointers of the agenda will act as a filler slide or the module starters right in a presentation then you have uh, let's say a uh, various charts and graph visual representation right now if it is a sales pitch or if it is an elevator pitch or if it's a let's say any sort of uh, keynote pitch the charts and graph play a lot of role right if you go ahead and uh, see a lot of ted talks whatever the presentations they present would either have a graph or a visual representation maybe a photo in the middle of the slide right maybe a photo in the middle of the slide and then you would have the story done around that picture right this would be the main element then or maybe the case there would be if it is a very technical sort of thing you would have let's say a scatter plot made a line plot or or bar graph or histogram then you're talking about that in the entire then you don't have a much sort of text you would have a graph you would label the graph of course x y what does this represent what does this axis represent and then you would talk around that part in the presentations right use visual representations of data to make the complex information more digestible and understandable right you don't want your presentation to have lot of complex jargons because then the attention of the learner would go away they would probably scroll their phones and not look at your presentations but you don't want that you would want them to be hooked on to what you are speaking and what you are showcasing so it becomes really important to start off with right then transitions are very important right add smooth transitions or animation so this is usually done when it is sort of either informal presentation or if it is something that is not very uh, what do we call animations would be something that transitions are good animations may make it a more informal presentation right when you have lot of let's say floating things coming on lot of jumping things coming on right you have those animations in the presentation right 
smooth transitions is when let's say you have a flow chart right you have a flow process that is defined so what would happen in a smooth transition this would come first this would be the second this would be third so when you click next so only this will be displayed then this will be displayed then this will be displayed in a step by step manner so that is something that is really formal you can use that in any sort of settings but the animations are a bit more informal approach so try not using too much of animations in your decks then it would be more like creating a school level presentation and not something that would be a university or a or a corporate sort of presentations then is examples and case study so if applicable include real world example or case study so one of the best methods to engage your audience one of the best methods to make your audience appeal or hook to your presentation is through example and case studies right people always remember this people always resonate to the real world examples and the real life case studies that are there right because it adds credibility to the presentation which is very very important then also you can use if it is something that is a motivational presentation add relevant quotes you can add from experts or if maybe it's a sales pitch right if you're talking about uh, you know selling a particular product then you can talk about the actors that you have that are there your brand ambassadors those who have spoken about that particular product you can add quotes if it is a motivational sort you can add quotes from various world leaders various famous personalities and you can make your presentations more desirable more uh, attractive more relevant to the scenario so these are the various key elements that are there also one of the major aspects is to focus on the content slides now content slides are the main body right for example in an email you have subject you have the header you have the first byline or some sort you have the main body text and then you have the ending to the email similarly in a presentations you have your opening of the presentation you have the ending the summary part but then in the middle is what we call about the main body text how would you indulge when you deep dive into let's say technical jargons when you talk about main context of the presentations which is not too fancy so that is when you have to be clear and concise with your points now each slide should have a single main point and idea avoid clutter on the slides right don't use a lot of pen while explaining that may make your presentation uh, not desirable avoid clutter and keep text concise then is use relevant images charts graphs and diagrams to complement your points and make your presentation more engaging now bulleted list when you're presenting key points use a bulleted list for easier readability font and color ensure that the font size is large enough right now font also plays a very critical role right if you are let's say if your header is of uh, let's say uh, text style let's say 32 text font size 32 and your body is of text size 9 which will also give a very you know bad feeling when the header is too big and the the content size the main body text is very small that's also not good you have to create a margin you have to make sure that your header is clearly visible but not overly visible that it disrupts the audience from looking at the presentation then uh, the color right you don't want to use you can use a lot of bright colors to highlight specific points but let's say let's assume that if i were to make this entire thing red right how would that feel that would not be good right so let's say that if i make this slide a very bright color let's say if i put uh, a very very bright color indeed let's say red right it's very not appealing right it's not soothing it's like something written in red which is also not good right if i make it too too let's say uh, a very bright color let's say yellow right i cannot barely read anything right so it has to have that readability it has to have that you know sense of things bold when you have to do bold you have to focus on a specific point then make that relevant point bold if not then leave it so that's how you have to make your presentations more engaging so in this module let's talk about creating content using chat gpt by content i mean the slides uh, let's create a presentation but let's first look at the interface of uh, chat gpt let's look at how the dashboard of chat gpt is let's have a hands on on that okay
I'll open up search uh, engine, right? Uh, you can take Google, Bing, anything that you write. And then I will type in here, PT, right? So I'll search for ChatGPT. Now the first link that comes is ChatGPT by OpenAI, right? We know it's made and developed by OpenAI. So we'll click on that. So now uh, I have logged in into my account currently. And uh, so I have logged in. So let's look at a brief view of what ChatGPT is about. So what you get is two models, ChatGPT 3.5 and GPT-4. So now what is the difference? Uh, basically ChatGPT 3.5 is uh, free for all. It is for anyone and everyone to use gpt4 is a paid version of it right i have bought the paid version so i have both models gpt4 and gpt3.5 right so what happens is what is the difference between the two let's uh, look at this i'll open open ai's website so if i see open ai's website i will come across a lot of things right let's say if i want to look at the two uh, most famous products by open ai that is chat gpt 3.5 and 4 right so now let's uh, look at the model gpt4 that is the latest model by uh, open ai so let's know how it is more advanced right so gpt4 is an open ai's most advanced system uh, which gives much more uh, logically correct logically sound results than its previous model that is gpt 3.5 so now what has happened in, in gpt4 the neural engine is of much higher accuracy it has much more understanding and problem solving abilities than its predecessor. So it has much more logical reasoning aspect to it. So if you add a lot of heavy, uh, let's say logical reasoning questions, it is much more suited to solve it than its predecessor 3.5, right? However, the speed of GPT-4 is slightly slower because it has much more uh, problems and the back end, the algorithm is, is in such a way that it takes more time to give your results. But the, the accuracy is much more in GPT-4 than in GPT-3.5, right? So uh, now let's see, uh, GPT-4 is more creative, collaborative than ever before. It can generate, edit and iterate with the users on creative and technical writing tasks such as composing songs, writing screenplays or learning a user's writing skill. So for example, if I give GPT-4 that write a poem on uh, on let's say any topic but every word in that poem should start with the letter m so it will give me that result it will make a poem it will generate a poem from scratch which is not uh, by the way copied from anywhere but it will create a new poem for me which would start which would have all the words that starts with the letter m now, GPT-4 uh, surpasses GPT-3 in the advanced reasoning capabilities. They have given the input how uh, GPT-3.5, that is charge GPT, is different from GPT-4, right? So, in the percentile rankings, right? So, 90th percentile, right? That's, a, that's like top 1% of the class, right? That is the result that GPT-4 got when it uh, gave these exams, right? When it was run, the exams were run through these. So it gave 90th percentile, that is basically Olympiad level things, right? Top 1%, right? Right? In biology, Olympiad, it is 99th percentile. That's basically a topper, right? So that's how advanced it has become, right? Compared to its previous models. So it is ongoing. The research is ongoing. OpenAI is still developing these models, right? But as it mentions, right, that GPT-4 is 82% less likely to respond to requests that this allowed content and 40% more likely to produce factual responses, right? More factual accuracy than its predecessors. So that's why GPT-4 is a really, really popular, but it is currently paid. Both the models are good, but GPT-4 is a much better model in terms of response and everything, right? So uh, now coming back to the topic, here's a quick dashboard on it. You can write your prompts in this message box here in which you can write your prompts and you can send your prompts or whatever it is, right? And uh, this is basically the threads, right? The threads, whatever the threads are there, that would be in this black section right here, right? So you can add new chat from here. You can close this sidebar when you are, you know, uh, asking or writing your prompts of particular topics, you can minimize that one, right? So one thing is that uh, chat GPT, right? Uh, this has learned and trained 
the data right whatever it has trained is up to 2021 september 2021 so anything that is after that it does not know if i ask him what is the date today right or maybe oh, if i ask them what is today's breaking news across the world right it would not give you because it will write here i apologize that i do not have real time capabilities my knowledge extends up to september 2021 so it will give you directly that okay i have not been trained to you know talk about what is happening in the world currently because my knowledge is up to date up till 2021 right so that's one disadvantage that's one drawback that chat gpt has that it's not aware about the current things that are happening right if there is any change in certain things it would not know right but on the other hand now i can tell it i can copy paste this if i want from here i can so this is for their own back end understanding that whether this was good so if it was good then they would have a parameter for this is giving good result if not then i could i could put the thumbs down one right then it would know what are the you know giving them the feedback that this was not helpful this isn't true so you can give the it will learn on that one right so currently since i use 3.5 so it showcases me that uh, it's default model 3.5 now coming back to our topic in which uh, we were talking about how to create a presentation how to create slides using chat gpt right so in this scenario in this context like let's start off by taking another random topic let's say let's take climate change for that matter now i will put certain prompts and create an entire deck how i like how i want the deck to be using chat gpt right so for uh, better results let's just take a gpt4 model and let's just uh, type in our our prompts here right so my first prompt would be quite generic i would not add too many details in it but when you're talking on gpt4 model if you give them various parameters then it is much more helpful otherwise gpt3.5 and 4 would be the same so if you have a lot of parameters let's say uh, climate uh, when i talk about climate change or the topic about climate so i would have if i want to input a lot of parameters in it you know talk about the audience in let's say asia pacific region know about what is happening historical data on how the global warming has uh, has started or or is on the rise what what are the various greenhouse gases so all that we, if i have to talk about i can give them the parameters to talk about right so all that we will see let's get into it let's dive deep into it so let's just type in first what should i name right let's say um if i have to create a let's say ppt on the topic climate change could you suggest me some catchy titles for my ppt right so let's just type in let's just see what it gives me right now i've given that i have to create a ppt on the topic climate change could you suggest some catchy titles for my ppt right now uh, it will give me a list of of answers right it will not give me one or two answers it will give me a list a good chunk of more than 20 or 20 uh, results right and i can pick from there right uh, earth is a tipping point understanding climate change unraveling the climate conundrum the heat is on decoding climate change so all this is given now i can choose right let's just take any uh, random thing right uh, let's just say so now we have got the content up so one other way you can you know ease your process of not copy pasting it to a slide deck or to the microsoft powerpoint is through a process called as uh, vba right so what it is let's look at so i will just do one thing i'll just create a dummy presentation right so i'll create an empty presentation as you can see so what will happen is that i will input in this uh, the vba code to create the vba code of this slides right so since there are a lot of slides it will not create the entire one but let's just take a dummy example i'll ask chatgpt to create a visual code so now here i have written make a powerpoint vba code for this to run on microsoft powerpoint right so let's see what the result is about 
so now it has given me all the code right it has made a code uh, that can be copy pasted in powerpoint and the slides will be there right so let's just copy paste this code let's go to the empty presentation that i have created so i'll click on this then do alt f11 right so what will happen is that it will open up this window right now what i have to do is i have to create i have to go on insert create a new module right so this new module is created right now what i'll do is i'll copy paste the code that was there in a uh, chat gpt gave me for vba so so this is basically visual basic for applications what it does it is your is your process of making a presentation so if i run it like f5 is how do you run so if i run it my it will automatically create these two slides from the dump right this was a dummy so two you can create more if you want so you don't individually need to add the content in there right so that's how you make your process easier in which you just have to dump what chat gpt has given you it will create a vba for it you can copy paste vba in your presentation and make the entire slide deck so how convenient it is right so this is all about vba already chosen earth at the tipping point understanding climate change now this is the beauty of chat gpt it understands what you have asked chat gpt before in the same thread right if i'm talking in the same thread right this is the new chat in the same chat if i'm talking to chat gpt right it will understand what i have spoken before it will understand what i have i have input before right it have that memory in the same thread right so now it understands that my title that i selected is earth at the tipping point understanding climate change right in two prompts before i i added this one right so i i chose it understood that from this entire dump i have chosen this part right and it gives me after two prompts it gives me the same thing right the title slide title is this subtitle of this is decoding earth's riding and fight for survival right so it gives me the first one here because i did not really specify it if i would have it would have given me the the one that i wanted right now it says that my slide one should be the title slide this is i explained it in the key elements the first slide is always the title slide then is the introduction a brief introduction about climate change its causes why it's important to understand and address it right then defining climate change this all this now if i am not happy with this right if i am not happy how it has you know uh, given me the things i can ask it to make it better right so now what i'll do is i'll ask slide number 2 that is introduction right so i'll copy paste this right here and i'll paste the prompt below and what will i do i will just write add elaborate it this point now i have to think in that perspective if it is an introduction slide how many pointers do i need right do i need to add images or do i need to add more text right so elaborate this let's say i find let like, let's say four more points should be there more four valuable will points points or uh, elaborate this point in four valuable points and add a case study example from history right history okay so now i'll give it this prompt let's see what the result is so slide number 2 right a brief introduction about elaborate this point in four valuable points now it will give me the dump that okay this is the thing why what is climate change climate change refers to a long shift in temperatures and weather patterns particularly a rise in global temperatures right case study the little ice age a period of cooling from the 14th century to the mid 19th century illustrates the natural climate variability during this period temperatures dropped by only about 1% but it was enough to freeze the river thames in in london causing widespread crop failures right so i asked him to i asked the chat gpt model to give me four valuable points and add a case study right example now i wanted to add a case study right what what it did is it added a case study in each pointer right which is what i did not want right so i'll write here just give me one case study 
in the above answered in the above answered and just give me one case study in the above answered and keep the pointers up to one line let's make it two line two lines okay now let's see if it understands or not right yeah so it, it gave me the thing understanding climate change the causes in i i asked it to give it in two lines it gave me two into two lines and then i asked one case study right one just give me one case study so now it gives me one case study that the dust ball of 1930s in in united states is an example of a climate event by human activity poor farming practices led to widespread soil erosion and dust storms creating a decade long drought Although not uh, direct parallel to today's global issue, that does uh, demonstrate how human actions can dramatically affect time. Now, this is something. Now, if I have to verify this, I can go and I can uh, write it in Google and see if this is accurate or not, which we should do. Any content that you put or go forward from adding from ChatGPT, it needs to be much more clear. Number one, in terms of the facts, if they are wrong, you need to cross verify it. Right? If you have any doubt. Cross verify it because ChatGPT is accurate up to some level, but you need to make you need to cross check because it may be wrong at times. It's not fully up to the point in which there are no errors. There are errors. There are things that are factually incorrect. So you need to also check that point as well. But since climate change is a very generic topic in which you don't need to address a lot of uh, you know technical terms, so this becomes much more easier. for for making a presentation for sure so understanding the climate change the causes the need to address is the importance of awareness right so now i have four headers in this things right okay let's now talk about uh, how to add these slides in powerpoint presentation so what i'll do is uh, what i have got here right now i want to elaborate it right so i'll just write i'll just rechange it so there is this option here where you can modify the current prompt right so i'll add uh, shift enter then i'll add add four or let's say five short pointers in each section okay in each section short crisp let's add the word crisp pointers Series P crisp pointers in section. So let's see what the result is. So now what happens is it would give me an iteration, right? It would give me okay. So this was my first iteration. This is my second iteration. So it will give me from now. It understands that title slides cannot have a four point pointer thing. So it will not give me those kind of pointers, right? now this gives me a, a lot more pointers i have asked for four pointers so it's giving me five pointers that is there now i want to add this in in my ppt let's say so i'll just go to i'll create a new right so what i'll do is i'll refresh this and i'll create i'll uh, click on the right button then i'll create a uh, microsoft powerpoint presentations right i'll name it as climate change climate change right i'll double click it i'll open it now this is what comes up it's the powerpoint that opens up now i want to add a new slide right so can i can create a title slide that is right there then i can add a uh, subsequent slides right then i need title and content then i can have much more like this so slide number 1 let's see what what it has given me right so it has given me first is the title slide is earth at the tipping point of climate change so i'll i'll click on this i'll copy paste this then i will add this here right climate earth at the tipping point right at this so this is currently at 54 let's just move it to 42 and let's just change this to let's say calibri and i can bold it 
and I have bolded. Now, if I want to add a subline, byline, right? That can also be done. Decoding Earth's rising temperature and and this I can write. Right. So this is generally in a lesser known, in a let's say a, a bit more smaller than the previous. So I kept this one as 42. This one I'll keep as 24 or 24 is is fine. So I'll keep this as 24. Now uh, this is my title slide right there, right? So this one is sorted. Now the second one is adding the content. The second one is about introduction, right? Introduction, I will either type or I'll just copy paste it. Introduction to, I'll just say climate change. Okay. So it comes up in board automatically at 44, but I'll reduce it to 32. Right, 36, let's just take it. Okay, I will have to select all. I'll just give the number 36. Okay, and I'll bold, it's already bold, it is perfect, right? Then I can add the content straight away from what it has given me. Right, definitions, brief explanation, introduction, and everything, right? So now, if I want to add another slide, I'm not happy with the flow, right? Whose historical overview. I'll just click on this, then I'll okay so it has given me this response but i think i want to let's say i want to have in third slide introduction i'll just uh, I have copy paste definition of climate change brief introduction right so now these are my main pointers right but i can't really write definition of climate change right so what i'll do is right elaborate on slide two and crisp pointers right so now it will go back and it will think what this is about now climate change reference it has given me that it refers to the temperature something yeah weather patterns and temperatures it includes both global warming driven by human induced emissions of greenhouse gases and the resulting so what i'll do is i'll just click, copy this and I'll just paste this. So since it's the introduction, the first pointer is about, will be about, about climate change, right? Then second would be it's a uh, universal effects, is uh, this effects, uh, yeah. So second I'm talking about what are the global impact it will have. So I'll add that structure right there, right? Now, if I feel, now if I feel that this is, so I'll just put the text box, I'll just write 24 right away. Okay, so it's giving me a warning, I'll just go and make it, the entire text box, I'll make it as 24, right? Now, if I want to justify this, right? Let's just say that I don't want this empty spaces. So I'll just copy paste. I'll use control J. So the text would be from line to line format. Okay. So it will be justified as mostly happens in a research paper of some sort. Right. Uh, then I want in the second page, I want something else. Let's say the topic on this significance. Right. So I'll go, I'll just paste here. I'll just have 24. So I can write in that manner. Now I want to include another slide in which this is there, right? So let's just say that would be the third slide. Now, if I want to include, uh, so I don't want to include this. I'm going to include something else, right? Uh, in this, I'll just copy this, right? So elaborate on, on the pointers, right? So this can happen. So basically anything and everything that you want can be done through this, right? You don't need to, you know, uh, look around a lot of places when you're running short of time. Make sure that the, the content is less technical because then you would have to verify a lot. But in cases of, for example, this, right? The role of carbon dioxide in greenhouses. I would want to go and verify if whatever this is written, right? Is correct or not. 
is are the greenhouse gases correct or not so which in which i can see is correct by the way but you know you have to verify it you have to go and verify it right so what what is this now i can add these pointers i can just go ahead and add the pointers right here right so i can add the pointers so now what is the best part about this is let's just take that uh, i want a historical case study to be presented right or i can ask them for historical case study on uh, climate change let's just modify some parts so i'll write for historical case study uh, on climate change can you add historical exam examples right so from the very start it is giving me the responses like the little ice age dust ball keeping curve 2003 european heat wave uh, record arctic heat uh, ice melt and all that so this is giving me this now i can add these case studies in my presentations or what i can do is also one more prompt i want to introduce is that develop a slide that introducing the main objectives of a climate change campaign include bullet points highlighting the key goals and strategies to be implemented right so what does this mean this means that uh increasing the awareness uh, key goals influence policy right policy changes need to be introduced engaging communities inspire actions right so the various strategies to implement is educational programs policy advocacy so all these things right so now the key goals are written so how they were it was structured in key goals and strategies so it will give me two different things now if it's my choice if i want to add it or not so let's just type in another thing let's just see what it gives the response so design a slide featuring the timeline of important historical events and climate change movement utilize the horizontal layout and add brief descriptions to each each event to provide context so so if the the prompts are a little more lengthier so gpt4 has this ability higher order reasoning right so it can give you better results in that scenario right so the timeline it is giving me in timeline 72 79 what are the various things first world climate conference then kyoto protocol this paris accord that happened to 2015 so that's also mentioned here right so all the things are mentioned here how the they are now if i want to have this right so give me a, this was the most popular one right so elaborate on this if i want to give a case study much more depth so i will add a prompt that would you know make make it much more bigger now if i read news i would know that there was a paris accord in 2015 so what would happen is if i want to add key sections in which i want to talk more about right so these are the elements that i can use right so this will be coming in now in our deck right if i have to make a lot of changes so i will what uh, i can make the changes to the design aspect of it i can make it uh, look how it's supposed to be right i can add changes to the slides how i want the slides to be right so this can be modified as much you can play around the functionalities of it but to create a crisp deck this is what is needed right you can what you can also do is if uh, there is that that kind of uh, space what you can do is you can also add uh, extensions to the powerpoint in which you can basically you have to dump what uh, chat gpt gives you and it will automatically give the response to it right so now we have got the content up so one other way you can you know ease your process of not copy pasting it to a slide deck or to the microsoft powerpoint is through a process called as uh, vba right so what it is let's look at so i will just do one thing i'll just create a dummy presentation right so i'll create an empty presentation as you can see so what will happen is that i will input in this uh, the vba code to create the vba code of this slides right so since there are a lot of slides it will not create the entire one but let's just take a dummy example i'll ask chatgpt to create a visual code so now here i have written make a powerpoint vba code for this to run on microsoft powerpoint right so let's see what the result is about so now it has given me all the code right it has made a code uh, that can be copy pasted in powerpoint and the slides will be there right 
So let's just copy paste this code. Let's go to the empty presentation that I've created. So I'll click on this, then do Alt F11, right? So what will happen is that it will open up this window, right? Now what I have to do is I have to create, I have to go on insert, create a new module, right? So this new module is created, right? Now what I'll do is I'll copy paste the code that was there in a chat GPT gave me for VBA. So, so this is basically visual basic for applications. What it does it is your, is your process of making a presentation. So if I run it like F5 is how do you run? So if I run it, my, it will automatically create these two slides from the dump, right? This was a dummy. So two, you can create more if you want. So you don't individually need to add the content in there, right? So that's how you make your process easier in which you just have to dump what ChatGPT has given you. It will create a VBA for it. You can copy paste VBA in your presentation and make the entire slide deck. So how convenient it is, right? So this is all about VBA. Now let's talk about the summary. Congratulations on finishing up this course. So we learned, let's have a brief recap. We learned about ChatGPT is a type of language model that uses deep learning to generate human-like responses to text-based prompts. Now it can be used for a variety of uh, natural language processing tasks such as answering questions, generating text and providing personalized recommendations on various things, right? So ChatGPT is very useful in creating content and structuring slides in PPT as we just saw. We also saw how you can optimize the way you can create slides using VBA. You can just have to put that dump as a VBA code in PowerPoint and you can just create an entire slide deck without even manually doing it. So saving even more time, right? It saves your time in terms of researching about a lot of things in terms of, you know, structuring it in a way uh, per slide, it saves you time, it gives you in a structured manner. So this is the advanced thing about artificial intelligence and chat GPT that we can optimize the way we are learning things, optimize the way we are creating things on this scenario, right? So for more such content related to such new upcoming technologies, stay tuned to great learning. See you in the next video.